So I thought I was going to make an Instagram video because they're quicker and easier, but I had too much to say. So here we are back on YouTube after God knows how long. Um, but basically what I was talking about on Instagram was the evolution of my work and how I think when I first got on Instagram, it, I was newly divorced. I was rediscovering myself. There was so much sexiness on there and so much beauty. <laughs> And yet it felt like, at least in terms of who I was following at the time, that it was reserved for women that weren't very big. And so the images that I was putting out initially, one, I was still styling, doing plus size styling at the time. That's actually why I got on Instagram. Um, so it was a lot about clothing and how you can be fashionable and plus size and sexy and plus size. And then I was pushing the envelope with some of the like semi-nude stuff because I thought it was important to show big bodies being sexy. Like why only the smaller women get to, you know, show their bodies on Instagram. So it came out of that place and my own exploration of my sexuality after divorce and after motherhood and just, you know, getting free. And it's evolved since then. I feel like not to say I have the body image thing completely under wraps, but I feel like I have come really far on that. But then it was like I was stuck in this how to be big and pretty. And I was still obsessed with being pretty and being the prettiest. And the thing about that is you ain't never going to be the prettiest. There's always somebody prettier than you. And it really depends on who's looking and who's asking. But really forget about even how other people judge. Our own internal dialogue around pretty. In terms of what I think is pretty, there's always someone that feels prettier than me. So if that is where I'm spending most of my attention and my focus on beauty, I am wasting my fucking time. And I feel like I've wasted a lot of time in my life that I could not get back trying to be pretty and trying to be the prettiest and prettier. And that shit is exhausting and futile. And not only was I trying to help myself, but then I was trying to help everybody else. And I'm not saying that there's no value in being a stylist or making beautiful images or being a makeup and a hairstylist. But I am saying that I think it's really important if we're going to push the envelope, if I'm going to push the envelope on this work, that I push back not just on being bigger, but on being pretty at all. Like that's where the personal evolution of the no makeup and the the trying not shaving and the you know not caring so much about how I'm dressed all the time that's been my personal work because I know that I in my mind I was still feeling like okay you can be big but you better be fly and you better have your eyebrows done and unpacking that shit that is really this next chapter for me the body image in relation to our obsession with beauty and appearance and, you know, a lot of this has come up for me as I think about the Get Naked, Get Free workshop that I'm going to start next week online, which I'm excited about because it's helping me reach women that are not in Los Angeles. And though I've done a Get Naked, Get Free workshop for six months here, this is different because I'm different. I'm different than when I started that. And I have had new thoughts and new epiphanies around this topic. So it doesn't mean that I don't want my partner to think that I'm beautiful you know, it. but when I die at my funeral, I really hope they're talking about all this other really cool stuff that I did and not about how pretty I am. And I, I know that to be true because I don't feel like my Instagram uh, account is primarily about me being a pretty girl. Like I'm not, I stopped modeling. I don't even look good most of the time to me. I really don't. That's how this came about is I went to check and choose with my son today, right? He's on winter break. This is the picture we ended up taking because the camera snapped before we were ready. And I just look silly. I'm making a funny face. My hair, you know, I just didn't do anything to my hair today. I've got on no bra and a Lululemon scarf with a hoodie. And I just thought, what's well, such a cute picture? Me and my kid, that's what we look like at Chuck E. Cheese. My driver's license picture came back. I had to retake it. And I was just like, mm, don't love that photo. But that's what I look like. And it, it would have hung me up for so long before having a driver's license picture that I didn't feel pretty or being out in the world not looking pretty. And now I'm just astounded at how much growth that I've had on this topic. And that's why I do this work is if I thought I couldn't walk you down, I can't promise you anything, but if I thought I couldn't walk you down a similar path that I've walked 
of unpacking a lot of this shit and getting from that point to this point, like it don't get worse than growing up in LA and trying to model. That is the worst obsession with beauty that you can have. If I can let, release these things living in this city with those aspirations and that obsession and get from that point to this point, I think it's a very promising thing about really the evolution of the mind and how we control it. And I'm also going to be sprinkling some Buddhism into the workshop because at the end of the day, I really feel like my evolution has stemmed from the intersection of feminism and Buddhism. And if you're really focused on those things and understanding how patriarchy and white supremacy really like force fed us these ideas. And if you're simultaneously looking about how the ego is really false and all of ours, mine and yours, and how not only do I need to be checking my own ego, but I need to be making sure that I'm not developing your ego further by doing the work that I was doing in the world. And I'm not saying again, that I'm never going to do any styling or that I don't love beautiful pictures and I don't love, you know, fantastical, is that, you know, we're making that a word, imagery. But in order for me to enjoy, enjoy those things again, I had to break free from them. So I'm rambling now. It's six minutes. If you listen to all this, you're fucking awesome. And you get a gluten-free cookie when I'm not on the cleanse. Actually, I have a gluten-free cookie recipe that doesn't include sugar. It's dope. Um, anyways, I appreciate you guys. This is why I don't do YouTube videos anymore because I just ramble and I don't have an editor. So I just post the whole fucking thing. Seven minutes. <sighs> Namaste.